appreciate it. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 uh, through 44 reads, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both, that had, uh, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as a sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Someone say nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He said unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five and two fishes. How many of y'all know about this miracle? Amen. Amen. And he commanded them to make all sit down. Everyone say sit down. Amen. By companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. When he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked upon to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes was divide, divided among them all. Here it is. And they all did eat and all were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they did eat. That they did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. We appreciate you so much in this place. We ask that you give us a word that will penetrate everybody's heart and that will strengthen us to believe you that much more. We're standing in your grace and your mercy, and we're confident, oh God, that you have something for us that's magnificent on today. For that reason, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Somebody say, thank God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, I'm here on assignment this morning to give you a word uh, from God that I believe is for those that are believers and ready to receive what God has for you. It will be something that blesses your soul. Many of us are familiar. Probably one of the most familiar uh, miracles we're uh, we're familiar with is the uh, uh, the uh, five thousand being fed with five loaves and two fishes. How many of y'all heard this miracle right here? How many of y'all heard it growing up by show of hands? Amen. Amen. And I want to deal with this miracle and I want to come from a different uh, uh, way uh, uh, that necessarily doesn't focus on the miracle alone, but it focuses on what happens inside of the miracle. Um, I believe that 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 many of us might be like the people in this text that are desperate and they're struggling and they're looking for some change to happen. If that's you in here, say amen. Uh, what I'm noticing uh, in the text is something extremely powerful. These people come and they hear, see Jesus and they catch him all the way on the other side of where he was trying to uh, have him and his disciples be in a private place and get some rest. But they were in such desperate needs and in such desperate times that they were looking for a savior. They were looking for something different. I don't know about anybody in here, but I don't know about uh, I know I've been in places where I felt like nothing was going to change. Anybody ever been there before? Uh, I I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been believing, trying to do everything I, I know to do, and it feels like nothing is changing, nothing is happening in my life. Uh, I, I don't see my, it seems like year after year, there, there's nothing different about the years. It, it seems like the struggles that I'm going through, I'm, I don't see anything getting better, but I'm in a place of nothingness. Amen, if you've ever been there before. Uh, 
So, so uh, I, I, I see these people, they're feeling like they have nothing for them. The text says they have nothing to eat. They spent all day with them and had nothing to eat. They didn't have enough to supply their daily need. Anybody ever been there before that you didn't have enough to supply your daily need? Uh, Minister White talked about it earlier that he paid pink slip to pink slip. Uh, y- y'all ain't never, okay, that's all right. Let me talk to just a few people in here that's ever been in a situation where you felt like you had nothing. You didn't have anything else to give. You didn't have enough faith to make it the next day. You didn't have enough in your mind to say that you can believe on. You you had nothing left. You were at your ends with. If there's been anybody in here like that, just say amen. Amen. Yeah, I want to talk to those people that feel like it's not going to happen for them. They feel like nothing, everything is over and, and, and they're walking in, uh, uh, smiling with your face, but hurting in your heart. You're frustrated because you're trying to get promoted and you haven't got promoted. You're trying to make a change and there hasn't been a change. You're trying to increase your income, but yet it still feels like you're going backwards. Anybody ever been there before? Yeah. Feels like nothing is going to be different. That every day is going to be the same. And, and, and they told me to believe Jesus, and I'm trying my best, but I don't see nothing. And I know that's bad English today, but I'm using the King James Version, and he used nothing, so I'm going to use nothing. Is that all right? So I come to tell you today to encourage you in your nothingness. I serve a God that can take nothing and make something out of it. Somebody say amen if you catch me this morning. In other words, the title of my message today is God's going to take something from your nothingness. Yeah, God's going to take something. You don't think you have enough. Your money is nothing compared to what you're trying to do. Yeah, your, your, your education is nothing compared to where, what you have in your heart. Uh, uh, your, your situation is nothing and it, you don't feel like it's going to be nothing. Matter of fact, somebody grew up and told when you as you were growing up, somebody told you you ain't going to ever be nothing. You ain't nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing and you never going to be nothing. All right. But I, but that's all right, because when they called you nothing, God is able to make something out of nothing. Somebody praise God in this place. I'm here to encourage you this morning. I'm here to give you a leap of faith. Some of y'all need to make a leap of faith this morning to see God do some amazing things in your life. So what I'm trying to get you to a place right now is to experience the miracle that God has waiting for you. Because, again, this text ended with a miracle. They took basically nothing and made something out of it. Can I jump ahead for a second? They took five loaves and two fishes, which was nothing for the 5,000 men, and it fed all y'all not hearing me this morning. He took nothing and made something out of it. Yeah, and that's just the men that was there. It didn't talk about the women and the children, but we know women and children was there. So it probably was 10,000 plus folks that was there that Jesus was able to take the nothing that even his disciples saw as nothing and made something out of it. God can take what you think is nothing right now. You don't feel that you have anything to contribute towards significance in this life. You look at your situation and say this is nothing compared to them. But God is here to take your nothingness, your feelings of inadequacy, your feelings of uh, being in lack, your feelings of feeling that you're never going to be able to do something special. God wants to take that and show you how amazing you can be. The text, I need you to understand what's so powerful about this miracle. This is the only miracle that is in all four Gospels. The only miracle that all four Gospels talk about. That tells me that this is significant in what Jesus was doing. And it was more than just the 5,000 that God was trying to show us here. God was trying to show that there's amazing things that happen when we believe that there's nothing there. Yeah, it's the only miracle in all four Gospels. Yeah, what we see is Jesus has just sent his disciples out to go minister. They come back and give great testimonies of how God was able to use them to cast out devils, to preach the gospel, and many people begin to believe. He tells them that, hey, when you minister that hard, let's go rest. Y'all need to rest. And so they begin to get on the ship with the goal of going to the other side of the uh, uh, river uh, and and to rest. But, but the people in the cities They saw and knew who they were, and they began to run run desperately to Jesus. Check this out. They ran all the way around and beat Jesus and his disciples to the other side. 
because they were desperate for something to happen in their life. They felt like they didn't have anything at that moment. They had nothing, and they needed something, and they know that where they were was not going to be able to provide them the something that they needed. Somebody going to catch that. So they had to leave where they were to go where somebody could possibly be, possibly give them something. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I, I'm going somewhere this morning. So they left, and they went to find Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus saw them and he had compassion on them. He said they were like sheep without a shepherd. They, they had nobody. See, see they, they had learned a lot of things but had never been taught. I'm trying to help you this morning. Uh, they learned a lot of stuff but they had never been taught. So Jesus began to teach them. He, 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 he understood that they had not, never been led and that they also need to be fed. Let me help you out this morning. Um, it is important that you have somebody leading you and then they can feed you. I'm going to help you out this morning. I'm trying to get you to a place of where God can move in your life. Uh, everybody that gets where they get in life is because somebody fed them. I wonder what's feeding you right now. Jesus. Oh, it's quiet in here. I'm going somewhere. I'm hitting some spots. What's feeding you right now? Is, is it your YouTube TV or is it your Netflix? Is it, is it uh, uh, what, what is inputting into your life right now that is causing you to get where you are or are not going? Yeah, because they understood that where they were that it was nothing there for them. There was nothing that could change their situation. Many of them needed something different. They were desperate. I wonder how desperate you are this morning for God to change your situation up. I wonder how desperate you are for God to do something amazing in your life. I wonder how badly are you willing to run? Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning. Are you willing to leave your comfort zone? Are you willing to leave what you know, what you've been doing, what you've been seeing to see something different in your life? In other words, do you really want something out of your nothing? Yeah, I, I wonder who in here because they were desperate. These people came from all over the different cities because they knew that there was a man there that had been doing some stuff that was different than their situation, and they wanted something different. Anybody want something different in life right now? Anybody looking for God to do something more? I don't know about you. I've been praying for God to do some things. Anybody else been praying for God to do some things? You've been praying, but you don't feel nothing. You've been praying, but you don't see nothing. You've been praying, but you don't hear nothing. Anybody other than me been in that situation before? I need you to understand that that's right. You are right where God can use you. You are right where God can bless you because God wants to see, do you trust me enough to get out your comfort zone and watch me turn your nothing into something? Somebody praise God in this place. Yeah, yeah. So, so the first prerequisite of everything I'm talking about tonight, this uh, this morning, is for people that are really looking for God to do something different. They're really on the inside. They want more in life. They 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 believe that there's more than what you have right now. You're supposed to be doing more. You're supposed to have more. You're supposed to be more. And for some reason, I'm stuck in a rut. I don't know what it is. I don't know why why I'm struggling. I don't know why I keep staying in neutral. Or it feels like when I'm going forward, I go backwards. I don't know why I'm in the cycle that I'm in. I don't know what it is, but what I do know that regardless of where I am right now, there's something on the inside that's bubbling up saying that there's more to life than this. Hey, there's more to, there's more to my marriage than this. Yeah, there's more to me being a father than this. There's more than me being a mother than this. I, I, I got more in me than where I am right now. And, and my job is trying to tell me that this is what I'm always going to be. Uh, my situations around me is telling me this is the way it's always supposed to be. I got everything around me that's trying to strip my dreams, trying to strip the vision that I had for my life, to strip the confidence that I had. It's wanting me to settle. But tell your neighbor, we're not settling it today. We're not settling it today. Yes, yeah, so I want to help you out today. So the first thing Jesus does when he wants to make sure that he turns the something out of their nothing and makes it a reality, first thing I got for you today, Jesus tells his disciples, make them sit down. Tell your neighbor, sit down. Yeah, yeah, if you want to see God do something amazing, I need you to sit down. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I know y'all sitting right now, but I'm figuratively speaking. Why do I need you to sit down? Because here's the thing. Some of y'all been racing and running and doing a bunch of busy stuff, but you won't just sit down. 
You got so your mind is racing and you got to do this and you got to do that and you always got something going on. You're doing a bunch of stuff, but you ain't going nowhere. And sometimes God just wants you to sit down. Yeah, yeah, sit down. Sit down where you can, can rest. Sit down where you're not busy and anxious and, and always got so much stuff happening. God says, I want you to sit down. He could not bless them until they sat down. Because if they were standing up and moving around, then they got all this chaos that is going on. But God was getting ready to work a miracle, and he needed the people to be in order. In other words, I'm telling you, you need to get your life in order. Yeah, you need to get your life in order. To sit down in the Greek there means uh, uh, for you to relax. Yeah, some of y'all don't, y'all, y'all so wound up. You're so bound up. You're so stressed out. You're so frustrated. You just feel like life is just fading away. It's, it's going too fast. You got to, yeah, yeah, that may be true. Life may be speeding up for you. But if you want God to do something significant in your life, tell your neighbor, sit down. You're going to have to sit down at some point in time and let God do it. Check this, check this out. Peter says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So you try to lift up and do your thing, but sometimes you need to humble yourself. That's like sitting down so that God can exalt you. God can move in your life on the right times. Everyone say payday. All right. In other words, there's a payday that's coming to you. But some of y'all are trying to rush God's process. And when you rush God's process, you miss what God has for you. But you need to sit down. Here's the other thing. This is one of my favorite parts. The another uh, definition of this word in the Greek, sit down, means to take a place at the table. OK, somebody going somebody going to catch that in a second. Take a place at the the table. The reason why I love this one so much, because what it tells me and what it indicates to me is that I deserve to be at the table. Somebody going to catch this here in a second. Uh, I, I deserve to be at the table. And at the table is where God has my blessing. At the table is where God has my favor. At the table is where God's going to speak to me. At the table is where I can communicate with God. You know you develop the best of friends when y'all eat at the table together, right or wrong. So I want to be at the table where oh, y'all not hearing me. Woo, Jesus helped me this morning. I'm trying to get you there. God wants to take your nothing and turn it into something. But you're going to have to sit down. What happened when they sit down? The Bible says that everybody ate. Everybody ate. The Bible says everybody ate. If you sit down, God's going to feed you. Yeah, God's going to give you exactly what you need to make it to where you're trying to go. But the thing is, you got to stop hipping and hopping. You go to one church to the next church. You go to one marriage to the next marriage. You go to one friend to the next friend. You go to one job to the next job. You change. You listen to this preacher. Then you listen to that preacher. Then you watch this two, three steps to your better life. Then you go to this five, six steps to your better life. And then you got a 12-step program. You're doing too much moving around. There's too much racing in your mind and your spirit. Sit down. Sit down, settle yourself, settle yourself in this season. God wants you to settle yourself. Stop moving around so much. Stop doing so much stuff. Stop, stop putting so much into your spirit. Stop allowing yourself to be exposed to so many things. It is okay sometimes to just sit down and recline, relax, so God can do something in your life. And when you do that, God will feed you. Jesus, help me this morning. God will feed you. When they sat down, the Bible says that they put them in stacks of five and hundreds. Why? Because they need to make sure there was order. He had to group them perfectly, and then they begin to eat the food. And so, so check this out. The five loaves, Jesus blessed it, and the two fish, and every time he cut bread, there was more bread that appeared. Y'all not hearing me? Every time he cut the fish, there was more fish that appeared. And so what happens was everybody that was sitting down was getting fed. And they never ran out. I need you to understand that as crazy as your situation is and as everybody else around you is being blessed, God has enough to bless you too. Yeah, if you're just willing to walk by faith, if you're willing to trust him by faith, God has enough to make sure that you get fed too. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to eat too. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to eat too. He's got just enough for you because God, oh my goodness, thank you, Holy Ghost. God said he'll bless you and he'll reward you and he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory. And the last time I checked, God's riches and glory never runs out. I ain't never seen God fail me. I've never seen him forsake me. When I think things were over, God made a way. If that's anybody in here, give God praise. 
Yeah, yeah, he's going to turn your nothing into something. I know you feel stressed out. I know you want to give up. I know it feels like it's been the same year after year after year, but your change is coming after a while. Just hold on. Hold on. Be not weary in well-doing. Woo. Because you're going to reap if you faint not. The key, people, is don't faint. There's two keys to this. Be not weary in well-doing. That means you got to do some good stuff. Okay, let me help you. I can't talk to your crazy stuff, but you can turn it, tell, tell your neighbor, I'm turning it around right now. I'm turning it around right now. Uh, uh, you you, you got to do some good stuff so that you don't get weary in your good doing. You, I know you don't want to get a work, uh, go to work, but get up anyways. Yeah, I, 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 I know you don't want to smile at work, but smile anyways. I know you don't want to hold your mouth because you want to tell them how you really feel. Hold your mouth anyways so you cannot be weary in well-doing because you're going to reap. If, here's the second thing. If you faint, if you don't give up. Yeah, most people don't get the reward because they give up too soon. Yeah, your blessing is guaranteed to you. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God's going to do in your life, he's going to do in your life. It is promised unto you. The only way that you mess it up is if you stop going forward. If you stop believing, if you stop trusting, if you stop holding on, if you stop. So don't give up on what God is doing. So I need you to understand everybody ate. Thank you, brother. Everybody ate. And then the other thing says everybody was filled. Not only did, how many of y'all like when you get your stomach get full, you didn't ate good. Boy, you didn't ate good. They, they were sitting there, man. Jesus know how to make some bread and some two fish. I ain't never had bread and two fishes like this. Man, it, you need I could get seconds? Okay. Or, not only did they eat, but they were filled. What am I saying? God is not just going to bless you if you sit down, but he's going to make sure that he fills you and meets all your needs. Woo, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm trying to help you. To those of you that are willing to walk by faith this week in this, watch what God does. If you learn to sit down, stop being so anxious. Cast all your cares on him, for he careth for you. In other words, in your mind, you got to sit down. In your mind, you racing, you racing, you racing. I got to do this. I got to get this done. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how am I going to finish school? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to do this? I want to get married. I, I want my children to be all right. I'm my health. I, how am I gonna, you got all these things that's racing through your mind. But if you sit down, God will feed you what you need. Now, let me tell you a truth. What you need may not always be what you want, but God never makes a mistake because he knows your needs are more important than your wants. And because he has to give you time to let you delight yourself in God's word so that he will give you the desires of your heart. But if he gives you what you want right now, it may not be according to his will and it can mess you up. Woo. This is why you need to be fed first. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is why you need to be fed first. This is why you need to sit down and somebody can teach you what you need to understand. And you can grow in God's word. And when you grow in God's word, he'll change your heart. And by the time you want what you want, it'll be exactly what God wants to give you. Yeah, he'll bless you in due season. So, so God filled them. And so right there, I could stop right there and that can be the message. Uh, but this, what's so powerful about this text is that I see two things working in it. The first thing I see working is the people that are desperate for God to do something different. They're, they're coming to him, they're running to Jesus, and they need, they know only he can make a way. And here's the whole key to this. Let me help you out this morning. They were coming for two main reasons, because they wanted to hear his teaching. If you go back up earlier in Mark, it says, what kind of man is this that he teaches what he teaches and even everything he does the Lord and everything responds and he's able to work these miracles we've never heard anybody talk like this to us before so we want to learn more about him and the Bible says in other versions it says that he taught them about the kingdom so let me help you out this morning you got to be desperate enough to want to know who God is Ooh, that's the prerequisite. It's not just what he can do, which he did a lot of things, but God moves in people's lives that say, Lord, I really want you. If you're real, I want to know that you're real, and I want to know who you are, and all those things that you have just stated in your Bible, I need them to come alive in me. So I see two things working. One, the people that were desperate, but the other thing I see happening is the disciples. 
I, I, God showed me, and I looked at these disciples, and this was the second part. Because how many of y'all love being, love being able to be fed? In other words, God provides your needs, and then he fills you up. Anybody love that? Now, right there, you can be good. Now, this next part, i got to be honest, this is only for those that really want to walk with Jesus. Is there anybody here that really want to walk with Jesus? Anybody really want to experience? This is only for those that really want to give their life to Jesus. Anybody in here want to give their life to Jesus? Just say amen, because that's who I'm talking to in this next moment. Because now I want to deal with the disciples. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Because here's the thing. Um, the text says that... The disciples came back, and God worked all those miracles, and then Jesus uh, 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 began to talk to these people, and then the day got long, and after the day was long, the disciples said, hey, Jesus, listen, listen, these people, man, they've been here all day. They need to go back and send them home so they can eat, because it's a sad thing. They've been here all day. They ain't ate nothing. Let's just send them home so that they can eat, and Jesus said something very powerful to them. He says, you feed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is where we as disciples get messed up at. Uh, um, let me help you out this morning. He says, you feed them. And, and, and if you read the different versions, basically it comes back to they was like, how are we going to do this? We don't have nothing. What we have compared to who's out there is nothing. And this is the struggle for all of us disciples in the room. We look at what God has called us to do and commanded us to do. And we look at the task compared to what we have. And we tell God we don't have nothing. We don't have enough to do what you're asking me to do. Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning. But Jesus would have never commanded you to do something unless he already had a plan for you to accomplish it. Woo, Jesus, I'm preaching this morning. I'm going to watch this this week myself. Uh, listen, Jesus, he told them to give them something to eat. He said, you feed them. And Jesus never flinched off that. He still expected them to feed them. But because of their lack of faith, they, he said, go and see what's out in the field. So what am I saying? Um, everything God has given you to do, one, if you had faith, God would bless what you have. And he would, exp he would multiply it. That means those of you that, uh, can I be this real this morning? I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm trying to help you. Those of you that don't feel like you got enough to pay tithes, uh, Jesus is saying pay tithes anyways. <laughs> those of you that don't feel like you got enough time to give things to the Lord, God says give to the Lord anyways. Those of you that don't feel like you know enough word to share God's gospel with somebody, God says share it anyways. Because what you feel is nothing. God can take something out of that nothing. Y'all not hearing me this morning. So what you feel is nothing, inadequate, not enough. God said it's more than enough because first of all, I'm the one that gave it to you anyways. Yeah, I'm the one that gave it to you anyways. But if you don't have the faith, then this is what God does. He says, go out into the crowd and see what you have. It's a shame that this little, that they had to take the boys lunch. lunch. They took a little boy lunch. The five loaves and the two fish come from a little boy that was in the crowd. That's wrong. We call that bullying at school. <laughs> they wouldn't go. Well, what we do, hey, what Jesus, what we got, we got five loaves and two fishes. Little boy over here, what? He gave up his lunch. Nobody else had lunch but him. But so what happens is this. Check it out, disciples, those of you that are trying to hear God. So God takes the boy stuff. The disciples bring it to Jesus. So what am I saying? When God blesses you with something that was not yours but was somebody else but they give, gave, gave it to you, it's a blessing. You should bring it to Jesus and see what he's going to do with it. Y'all not hearing me this morning. So, so what happens? What does Jesus do with it? He blesses it. And he gives it back to the disciples. So, so to help them fulfill the purpose that he gave, the commandment that he gave them. He told them to go eat, feed them. They still were the ones that feed, fed them. They didn't feed them with what they had. They, feed, they were fed, feeding them with what Jesus blessed them with. So instead of them taking it and keeping it, which is what some of us do after Jesus, Jesus blesses us, they went and fed the 5,000. Woo, Jesus, I'm trying to help you this morning. For those of you that want to see God really move in your life, whatever God has blessed in your life, whatever you said, won't he do it, said he would, all that you're supposed to go give it to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to go give it to somebody else because Jesus never changed his commandment on your life. 
He never could. Whatever he calls you to do, you're supposed to do it. Yeah, if you're a musician and he blessed you to be a musician, you're supposed to use that for his glory. Uh, if you're great at making people laugh, you're supposed to use that for his glory. If you got a heart for people, you're supposed to use that for his glory. Stop saying, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, I don't have the education. Stop saying, I don't have nothing, because God says, I can take your nothing and make something out of your nothing if you're willing to trust me by faith. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I'm helping you this morning. And so what happens is they fed them. And check this out. This is where your blessing comes in. Because the Bible is clear that the disciples never ate at that moment. See, the crowd was the ones that were f ate and were filled. The, the crowds were the ones being fed. I need you to understand um, that when you're serving, you're not the one that's get fee getting fed. Yeah, I know this is our greatest struggle because what happens is, can I break you down real quick? Because you're giving out and nobody's giving back to you, you want to quit. Yeah, because you, you're giving, showing love and you're being faithful and you're doing everything you're supposed to do. And you're not get, I know this because I'm a pastor and I feel this from time to time. I give everything that I have and nobody's calling me and saying, hey, you all right. Uh, and listen, don't y'all start calling now. I mean, unless God lead you. All right, I'm just trying to use it for the message here. Oh, pastor, don't nobody call. I love you, pastor. I'm going to call you next week. <laughs> Uh, but what I'm trying to put a point to is that there are seasons where you're giving everything that you have and you're being faithful to what you know is right to do for those that really want to follow Jesus and you're not going to get back what you're giving. That's OK. Tell your neighbor that's OK. Because if you get caught up in the fact that everybody else is eating but you and everybody else is getting filled but you, you're going to miss your blessing. This is why some of us don't get our blessing. For while they were being, while they were being fed and filled, the disciples' faithfulness, the text told me that after they fed all the 5,000, that there were 12 baskets left over. Is somebody going to catch this in a second. Oh, somebody going to catch it in a second. There were 12 disciples, and after they fed everybody, and everybody was filled, there were 12 baskets. Oh, shout if you get what God is saying this morning. Oh, so what am I saying? You're going to get the overflow. You're going to get the abundance. While they got what they need, you got more than enough. Woo! While they're just getting what they need, your faithfulness is going to be more. Oh, I come to give you life that you may have it what? More abundantly. Yeah, that means overflow, overflow. Tell your neighbor overflow. Tell three people I'm going to get an overflow. Overflow. He's got an overflow for you, for those that are willing to trust God. So I know you've been sitting back and letting everybody else do the work. You've been letting me preach as hard as I can, and then you've just been sharing the Utah. But now it's time for you to begin to do what God's given you to do and stop saying it's nothing. Because it's all right if it's nothing, because God takes nothing and makes it something. Matter of fact, he takes, he, he, he'll make something out of nothing. How many of y'all believe that this morning? I believe God is trying to shift some mindsets this morning. He's trying to get some of y'all to stop looking at your situation as a half empty glass and start looking at it as a half full glass and stop looking at your life negatively. Because here's the thing, there's nobody in this room that can put you in hell. Let me help you out. There's no God in this room other than the God that is in her working through us right now. And he's the only one that can put you in heaven or hell. What am I saying? So it doesn't matter the mistakes that you make and the background you have or don't have. If you're willing to trust God and walk by faith, he will take your nothing and turn it into something. And God will get the glory out of your life. That's why the parable of, parable of the talents is so powerful. Because there's one that's given one, one given two, one given five. The five that had five gained five. The two that had two gained two. Notice something. One was given more because he had greater ability. It ain't about comparing people. But here's the thing. Both of them got the same reward. The Bible says that both of them were told the same thing by their master. Enter into the joy of your master, uh, uh, the joy of the Lord of your master. Enter in. Both of them enter into the same thing. There was no greater reward for the five. It's just because God had given him more. He expected more. So whatever level you have in giftedness and calling and purpose, whatever, however you're wired by God, God expects you just simply to be faithful to that. Stop trying to be something else that you're not. You don't have to compare yourself to other people. Your pathway is not the same 
same as other people's pathway. Your destination is not the same. Your destiny is not the same. You just got to understand, I just got to be the me that God called me to be. And if I do what God's given me to do, God will is faithful and he will not allow me to not be blessed for my faithfulness. I need you to understand this. God promises to bless you and to keep you if you keep your mind on him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And this is where the enemy wants to throw you off because he understands very clearly if he can get you distracted and get you comparing and competing against others, then you'll walk away from what God has for you. And you, instead of sitting down, you get to running around doing a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. You don't believe me? I just use scripture. Only what you do for Christ Okay, somebody knows that in here. That means every other thing you're doing, not necessarily saying it's bad, but don't forget only what you do for Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing. What you want your life to be stamped with is that I served God with all that I knew, and I did what he gave me to do. Yeah, I had to cry sometimes. Yeah, I wanted to give up sometimes. Yeah, it was lonely at times. Yeah, I was frustrated at times when I had to walk by faith, when I had people talking about me and running my name through the dirt, but I had to stay positive, and I had to speak the godly things when I wanted to give them some devilish. Uh, anybody been there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 sometimes you're being pushed, and life has a way of trying your faith sometimes it's with your children sometimes it's in your health sometimes it's in your marriage sometimes it's with your job sometimes it's with your family members that you only see every six months but when you get around them they got a way of trying you anybody else testing you and you got to fast before you get around them so whatever it is I need you to understand Whew. When we get to the other side of this life, whew, after everything that we've been through and everything that we've gone through and all the pain and the hurt, what I'm excited about is I got something to look forward to. There's a life after this life. I don't have to worry about I told y'all last week where, where the, uh, uh, the thief on the cross told Jesus, remember me when you come into your paradise. I'm so glad that God's going to remember me for me being faithful to the end, not giving up when I wanted to give up, not quitting when I wanted to quit. I stayed there though it was killing me, though I was frustrated. Anybody else in this room understand where you're going after this? There's a place that is after this place. And what we do now for Christ is what matters most. Yeah, I want to encourage you this morning. Let us stand. Yeah, I want to encourage you this morning. God can take your nothing and make something out of it. He wants to take your something. He wants to make something out of your nothing. And God wants you to have faith and believe him. For those of us that are just trying to get close to God, God says, just sit down. You've been doing all that moving, just sit down. Just sit down, recline, let me take care of you. Be anxious for nothing. But take all your cares and all your struggles and, 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 and pray unto the Lord. Seek his face. God will hear your petitions. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Yeah, God just wants you to sit down. Sometimes we, we got so many things racing inside of us, and we just so, whew, I don't know, anybody ever been there other than me? Just so much going on, so much is happening, and we feel overwhelmed sometimes with the tasks that are in front of us. I, I'm a single mom, and I got three children. How am I going to do it? I, 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 I'm trying to make it through. I'm working 60 hours a week, and there's still not enough. How am I going to do it. I, I got these struggles, these addictions, these struggles, and, and how am I going to overcome them? I'm, 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 I, got a, I got a desire to do something special in my life, but yet I feel like I'm stuck in this place. Lord, how am I ever going to get over? I know I, I feel you in this place. All of us got something that we're battling and we're fighting, and we feel like we got nothing in our hand to work with. But, but God's got your back. God sees where you're at with our heads bowed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace.